phone ID connect on the last session. So we'll be from there. Uh, so ID connect was uh, 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 which was developed on the or uh, why it was added uh, because uh, in for two point zero right uh, is a it was no standard way to get the user information. Uh, so it cannot be used for so who was just for created so to overcome that issue uh, the OIDC framework was the they all work on protocol connect it can be used for syndication so uh, a new endpoint was added to the open ID connect where you can get the user information. We have except we get one more token in open ID. Right? We have two tokens, one is ID token. Other one is yeah. I need to go. That means on OAuth two point zero, if you use authorization code for it, then just in the so you have to pass like what you want on the on the what like email you want this this your open ID and then rest of the protocol if you find open ID there right then. Uh, you get the ID token along with the other attributes and and access token. This line source number is the is a person who used this person. that is the answer. So shift the word operations with redirect URI right small type code. This is authorization code. So we have to define open more parameter here. So ready profile. Or if you want more information, then you can add email ID also based on open authorization. But in OIDC flow, this is a parameter. Authorization store because uh, Indication authorization, then, then the user consent happen. So, this is on the front end and it will attach the direct URI authorization. Right? This authorization code now client have to again go to authorization and exchange this ID token. Uh, so authorization for access token and ID This is you have to the token and get that and so 
it gets the ID token and access ID token that can be used for logging the user right? uh, with the with like you have to define all that on the ID. So you will have first name, last name, email ID, maybe address all these things and then you can use this value to create the user account the and then then the access to the to to get the more user information like if you need to contact or if you want to read the email XYZ whatever the access how the flow will start the client URI or then client ID. We'll go more on this. We add the URI to where the request is required. So, open ID file and response type. That means it's a transition. Once you get the authorization, okay, then uh, the client has to make the token to get the ID token and access to the to the request, then the client submit the request and grant it. And it will get something like this. Some expire and token type it is always going to be the bearer of the subject. Okay. So let's call the simple use cases for the. So nowadays, Open ID Connect mainly used for indicating the user. Right? Simple login application in which you can say it's like duplicate application or SaaS applications that are hosted on the some cloud platform. Um, those are being used. Or all the modern applications, they, they are going to work. ID so they are designed from scratch for this cross site so so when when we were talk, talking about single sign on right we in the initial classes we talked about the domain right domain has have to be same For the single sign on to work with that, right? Domain is not, not same, then we will face, uh, you cannot configure single sign on. That was the old way to achieve the sign on. But on with the Open ID Connect, that is like, it's gone, you can achieve single sign on between any domain, right? Uh, any scope of domain if some website have, for example, .co.in or .net or .com and we found the open ID. Mobile app, the sample login did not work with the mobile apps, right? It was very difficult to implement. This protocol is mainly used for mobile application. And delegated authorization or delegated authorization that 
means align axis your or some part of your axis to the contacts or maybe or maybe maybe some post made right if you want to say that post on different what for me use for the API so go for both and right we are talk, talking about the some API if we are going to some APIs are talking to each other to achieve some data right so both API getting access to the data and some others that means Let's say you have an user on who got the access. Now you want to uh, configure, let's say, Google Calendar. So Google Calendar endpoint and then exchange the token to retain that. Whereas token ID characters will be used for logging the user inside us. So this protocol is more of our which we are going to use uh, because in like uh, in upcoming days maybe like next five years seven will be like old protocols and new protocol will be the making you the available in system that means the same to log into different or delegation an ID uh, now you have to be like decide which, which kind of flow you want to use for your oh, open ID right like there are many flow and you have to like mix and match them. But on the basic level for the web applications, right, with which have some backend servers, right, where they can store the token and all those things, then you know, right, right. And for the native mobile application, so for the mobile application, you have to use uh, authorization code flow with Pixie. But yes, Pixie, it's, it is a proof key exchange. So we will go more detail. It, it's like more secure, uh, more secure version of authorization. And specifically, you from the mobile application. Because in mobile application, right? Uh, if someone get holds of your application and own that information, right, then it can uh, get the all the authorization access token and, and the code and all those to and these kind of thing, right, or for the application enhanced version of And JavaScript and single page application that can be paid. That means single page application, they really don't have any backend, right? Uh, so, so you have to use implicit in that case. But the uh, new, uh, there are some new applications, right? Uh, Node.js or latest version of the Node.js where they use. Some of the backend, some you have it in the backend, so you can use the transition code for the to talk to the developer of the application. So, 
So in microservice slash API, that means machine to machine communication. In this case, uh, there is no end user, right? It cannot provide consent to each other. So in that case, we will use client credential. So it's specific, uh, some specific client ID and some client credentials are created and they are embedded in the system. So two APIs can talk to each other without being like prompted for user consent and uh, and like some copy paste words. They will just use a basic application may make a request with their client ID, client credential, get the access token directly, and then exchange the access the API. Mm -hmm. So in Open ID, we have some more uh, some more endpoint. Um, we will go through the endpoint more detail. Yeah. With Pixie Flow. Before Pixie Flow, let me at least lab and no worries. No worries. Mean my let's start with the pixel. So, uh, ID authorizes for, for pixel. So, uh, this show is this used to verify, right, where the access token to whom the access token is issued, right, at uh, authorization server. And point. Yeah, so it is used to verify the access to the issue. The same app as the authorization was in form, right? So we are sending the access to the same entity where the initial request came from, right? So let's say there might be some cases where. Uh, is some man in the middle kind of attack and the authorization, right? Uh, authorization code is stolen, and that person then will make uh, make the request uh, access token and will get the access and can use the data relation. So, to prevent these cases, we, we have. Flow where you validate where the request came from, right? The initial request for the authorization code and the token endpoint, right? Is the is is a person making uh, the request for access token the same as the one who made the request for uh, authorization code? So how it is an last the flow. So there are three main parameters in Pixie flow. First thing is the code verifier. So code verifier is but it is the random cryptographic spring created in the login process. Whenever the user tries to log in to, right, to the client, that means some mobile application. Or some other applications. Create a code file, a random cryptographic string, and then we have code challenge. So, what challenge is the code verifier? The random string is then hashed by sharp two twenty six hashing algorithm and. Then that hash is 
encoded by base 64 encoding. This becomes your forward channel. Okay. So first thing is require a random cryptographic string created during login. And that 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 string is then has sharp 256 and then uh, it's like encoded by base 64. So code challenge method is a algorithm. It's going to be short. So let's look at the flow here. So to just initiate the login at the client. So during the login process, uh, client create code very fast, random. And it then hashes this algorithm uh, this string. Uh, by shard everything to make a code challenge. For now, we have code verifier, code challenge. Now, the client will make the, the request, request to the identity provider. Right? And it will keep the code challenge in the HTTP direct. Will add the course challenge the initial request, right? So what the identity provider or the authorization server will do, it it will take the code challenge and store into its memory or some persistent data store somewhere, right? Uh, so it will keep the information there, okay, from this client. That's a, this is a client ID. And this is the code challenge I got from that client ID. So it will create a mapping and store that information at this. And then the application process happens and the code is sent to the application authorization. Okay. So now, now the now what happened? Uh, the client, right? Uh, the client is going to exchange the authorization code, right, for ID token and access token. So in that request, it will add the code verifier as well, right? So it will send the request for token, uh, the request for token along with authorization code and the code verifier, which it created during the log login. Login process the client, right? Then, so what the identity provided is it, it already has a mapping for code challenge, right? Now it got, got, got the information code verifier as well. So, what it will do, it will take the code verifier and then it will try to hash. As the value using the same cryptography, uh, sorry, we try to hash the code verifier by the same hashing algorithm. So at the end, we should have the same code challenge. One it got the during the initial request, and one that it uh, calculated right, uh, and it got the code. Both, both of these to the same. The hash to be the same. If these two value matches, then the then the authorization server or the provider will know that the request is coming from the same uh, same client, right? Who initiated the flow in the beginning, and who is now requesting for the access. These are both the same. Let's say so three code verifier, some created by client, code challenge, uh, same code verifier is then hash, but start code code challenge method is like what style code that it is. So during the request these entities are created 
and the core challenges sent to the authorization server, authorization service servers to make it with the mapping protocol and that is the authorization. And then client adds the token and needs go to the token endpoint and exchange it to the access. So in that request, it also add the code verifier. Once the authorization server gets the code verifier, it will use the same hashing algorithm, uh, the short matrix, to recreate the same hash which is during the initial request. Right? That is the code challenge. If both the code challenge match right at the identity provider, then it will allow the access to the access. So why did it is used? Is it flow right in the is it flow the access token is sent from the from the front channel that is browser and if you can uh, like JavaScript or some uh, some bad book here meaning the browser to see the access token the access token is really very sensitive and also to when the first site request so let's say you shoot the access token for some other client, right? Now the same token is used by like some client B, right? Who, Sorry, I'm having trouble. Please try in a different one. Yeah, so the client B takes the authorization code or some, uh, some bad entity, some attacker use the access token and try to make the request of the token so when those we use uh okay so how how the um, so before i start this right uh, they there are some basic requirement enable open id and auth in the segment rand first you need to enable the access code uh, so let me enable the access code uh, so here you are. this as a Store. So you can use maybe OUD or any app. Okay, and data. Right. So this is what I'm using. So push application for this is. This you have to you have to configure this very long application is going to this so and you have to define the 
I put some of the things that you like the most best. Okay, I'm going to give you a database show something on the place this is the primary define the this application system dot pvc dot to enable the and then from the segment of management instead you have to do an activity as and then enable the so all the information will be stored there. Being so that's the minimum requirement for the connect. So let's first do authorization provider. So authorization provider, right? So it is. Uh, it is your authorization server, right? So this you can configure multiple authorization server as well based on your need. So this is an example authorization server. Let's take a look. We have inside the authorization. So the provider name is like what name I'm going to use the ID. For segmenter, you just go to the vendor, you just go where the authentication authorization is going to take place. So, search filter is like uh, if you want to specify not the complete user directory as a specific branch or some group like that, you can define using the search. Let's look at the policy expression. So here the authorization base URL is going to be your SPS hostname, the SPS base URL. The same which we use in the identity in the system configuration tool. So authorization code expiry time, new number of time. The authorization code should be used at the top of the endpoint, and you have to use your okay. This is like something same way which we did in the in the SAML we we use the SPS redirect gsp then redirect dot gs that was used for the same here we have different URL in the same a web store is secure then secure redirect okay we have to protect this url uh in the domain configuration and i will show that to you then we have signing here you have to say like uh, the certificate in SAML, we have to use the SPS certificate signing algorithm. And how you want to do this, like so we want to sign the information, sign the information, sign the right? This all. And now we have claim, right? So are claims claims is like a user has some identity right that identity is made up of some different different attributes so these attributes are called claims in open id uh, domain. so you have some name that you are going to map to the sub attribute of a user right uh, so name is mapped to the cn cn attribute to the L tab in your user type. Same like email attribute is mapped to the mail. Sub is mapped to the UID. Even name is mapped to the name. So these are called claims. Right? And 
scope is uh, is very important uh, in because scope defines what kind of access you are granting. Right? Without defining the proper scope, right, uh, it will mess up the flow of the operating. Right? So if I say name is email and if i start passing like name so you can pass like multiple claims in this you can pass like email xyz so this thing you have to control as a as a open id as an administrator right you have to control this so for example profile i may make a name and email ID. So if so in the book in the program, if the user asks for the profile right, he, he will get the information in in access open name and email. Right? In open ID I am passing name, email ID, sub given name, all the things. This is just for the sample. So these are these attribute mapping and scope mapping are really important. So yeah, these have to be configured based on the need of some specific. So that being the case, let's close this. Let's in this and. Uh, if you see here, I created one SPS OIDC domain. Let's take a look at this application. I have the user, I am. So, what I have done here is like I have protected this page. It's authentication URL, it's your authentication URL. Let's take an application. So here are the the web agent tools which we are going to use. So get to post and connect, right? And we are going to connect with SPS file or in as a SQL tools. Okay. And then I have unprotected this URL. I have web service C A S S O O I D C. Right. So this is the base uh, base URL to your OIDC that we have to un. Okay. Now let's go to the configuration of the ACO agent ACO the SPS secure process. Let's take a look at this. So there is one parameter. Uh, which is used for the right which is yes course configuration this parameter is used for uh, configuring the ID relation let's see it is this okay see uh, the of format here is like this uh, it's um, key value Resource for this. This is my base YDC URL and allowed origin, right? Where from where the request is allowed, right? So from my slab.com, right? Here are the request. What are the method? Maxage, the same maxage parameter which I used in the uh, while creating the authorization server, right? Allowed. Authorization. Same I have to do for the secure redirect also, secure redirect page. And then I have to add three more uh, parameter, same parameter for, for the client ID. Right? See, if you see, this is some client ID created lab quantity. Okay. And for the token endpoint and the dot well known. We just take a look at the configurations. 
This is some name I will give to this, right? The client ID, some random string, fluffy string, right? Which is created during the initial process when you create the client, right? And then client secret. It's some random string that, that is also created uh, during. So, so these two are very sensitive. Client ID is a client secret, right? Yeah. It's like very sensitive. Now we okay. which page you are going to use for the user. So we I put you at the default OIDC page. But uh, you can do the customization in the page as per your need. You can disable the consent as well if you are using this flow for client attention. Right? So, client indication. We have like Client authentication is like what kind of authentication, uh, what type of application is client is, right? We have to like public and confidential. So, what is the difference between public and confidential? It's like, uh, so uh, on the token point URL, right? If, if the Client type is like public, right? Then the client don't have to do some additional, some additional author, uh, some additional authentication at at the token. But if it is potential, right? Then it will have to do authentication by different method. So if we do this right potential and you will see we have uh, we have authentication type post basic client secret data key, uh, private key data right? these are the method by which the client has to do authentication on the token endpoint to get the access so in our lab, we have the six legs, uh, like public. And if you enable the pixie here, the, the CFO will be used for this application, right? So in the detail, basic secret JWT and authorization. Who is the authorization? So I'm using the default the authorization provided by the as an OIDC. First, to the, this, this specific client can, because so I'm only using OpenID uh, and email. I'm not going to file to be accessed by this, uh, this specific client. Grant type. Grant type is like what kind of flow this uh, this client is going to use. Authorization code, a refresh token. Uh, a refresh token is like is like uh, some access token is only valid for some specific amount of time, right? So there are some use cases where application have to be logged in. Like for example mobile application, right? The session has to be maintained for the application once user login. So if he is not 
We're choosing the application of the this is the title time of the state, right? And you cannot keep the user logged in for like this that's it, two months, three months. In that case, we use the refresh token. So refresh token is like to, to get the access token again without being going to the complete like you have the authorization code and the previous and then change the endpoint in the back channel. Avoid that a refresh token is issue. Right? So refresh token will have validity like one month. That's a two month long three months. So whenever session is going to get expired, right? So this uh, this client is going to make a request to the user or token token endpoint and it will send this previous token, right? The previous access token along with its refresh token to the token endpoint, right? And it will ask for the new access. So the authorization server is going to check the old token right from its store or whether this is the correct old token is uh, right the values are correct or not. Then it's going to check the refresh right if it's if it is valid or not. They both match. Then it will issue a fresh access to. So user can be logged into the application amount of time without going to the same port again. Implicit flow is something like uh, we talked about like uh, no back channel uh, communication happen. It just do the authentication, provide the consent, and then access is sent to the browser, the ID and access. JWT bearer, JWT bearer uh, is like uh, the request at the authorization uh, at token endpoint. The the client has sent some more specific data right to do some additional authentication. That is more or less JWT bearer. So we will. Like see these two things, uh, public and confidential, and data will be where more in the detail. And let's just like code, ID token, and token. It's like if, if you are sending this a code, then the user can, the client can exchange this code at the uh, authorization at token endpoint. For ID token and access token, if you are using ID token and token, that means user will get the ID token along with the authorization code. And to get the access token, it has to go to the authorization and, uh, token. So ID token will come in the initial post. And just the ID token, user will not get the authorization code just the ID token. Okay. So this is like how you want to send the information standard that is the TQT format like enable the persistence session. If you want to just send the session also that and then we come to the redirect URI. Right. This is where you have to send all the information back to user. Uh, the client. So this is my lab of my lab for as a platform. If you are going to use any function to classify it, that's clear. And now these these are the issue required. They are who is going to issue this all information? So this is the issue to issue this authorization endpoint where the authentication and authorization will happen. So this is the endpoint which with the client is going to token endpoint where it can exchange the token, get the token, 
ID token access. User info and password. The access token can be used to attain or to gain the more information of the user at this at this end. Use user info and introspection and point. So introspection like if you uh, if access token is uh, sorry not access token refresh token is uh, issued right so user will call to the introspection uh, the client is going to call the introspection and you get that token as created at this point once that is the introspection endpoint will call the token endpoint and will issue a new access this is for attacking the validity if the thought one is correct. Evocation endpoint. This is primarily by the admins where you can revoke the access of some right. Let's say it device is compromised, right? And then you add to know. Then at this endpoint, you can the client ID the Client ID will come there, and the, all the token issued to the client ID will be revoked. It will be in JWS, JWS, Java keys. JWS, Java keys, or JWS token keys. Right? If you are using these flows, if these flows are being used, right, then you have to define these URL here to give it to the clients, right? And metadata provider metadata. So instead of Giving all this information individually, right? So we just uh, give this this URL to the client to access of the information. Uh, so this URL I'll show this to you now in next class. Here will happen all the detail of this this provider, right? The lab token ID, all the configuration which are allowed, right? All the Endpoint. It will be shown into this mission. You just send this mission URL uh, to the, the the client, and they can configure. This is known as the well-known URL, Open ID well-known URL, and they don't have to know the information of any other like what is the token endpoint, what is the use the endpoint. They don't have to know all these things. Just this well known URL they can configure at their end and, and the client ID and client, client secret. These two information we just put at their end, configure at their end. That's the flow is continued. And they can check the flow and then they will use it. This what we have now uh, we cover the see flow a public and confidential thing. This is one of the main important topics which we have. This is the only point which is left for the open ID. There are some information. We will cover this in our slide. So tomorrow is going to be last session. Uh, last session for this, we will cover this in example the OIDC works right in the lab. But all the information we have to do so that part uh, we will see tomorrow, and we we will we will also see that question. And the potential application and the book.